When Mario arrived back at Peach's castle, he couldn't help but notice the air had a musty quality to it. The castle walls crawled with overgrown ivy and moss. Thick clouds presented a dark, gray scale quality to the world. Smoke rose from several areas within the walls, indicating it was dinner time, and the toads were preparing to eat. Signaling for the drawbridge to be lowered, he couldn't help but feel resentment toward the toad who manned the gatepost. Mario thought, I should have that toad thrown out of the castle. Horsebacked men should be rallying around me to see my return safely. Not that I need them. Some goddamn respect is in order around here. When Mario was crossing the drawbridge, a toad ran out to greet his safe return. About time someone recognized my arrival, jeered Mario. I, I, I'm sorry, Sir Mario. It seemed the gate guard saved some shrooms for his night shift appointment, and he passed out on the job, stammered Toad. Have him brought to my chambers tomorrow. He will spend the remainder of the night in the dungeon. Sir, don't you think that might be too harsh? With a quick, intense glance, Mario shut Toad up in an instant. Nobody would defy his order, especially not a mere Toad. This kingdom was barely being held together amidst all of the chaos that permeated the world. If Mario allowed the Toads any mercy, it could mean the end for everyone. Where is the princess? whispered Mario. N Nobody has seen her for several hours. Everyone thought she had left with you on your mission, said Toad. Anger shot through Mario's face as he bolted toward the main castle chambers. Flying up the stairs, he began to feel an intense panic building inside him. As he entered the main chambers, he threw open the door to find an open window and a note written in blood. The note was scrawled in the ancient language of Orasfera. Though Mario could not read the forbidden language, he could feel its power seeping into his mind. He began to hear whispers saying, Hey Mario, but our princess is in another castle. But our princess is in another castle. Come to Koopalingo. Koopalingo. Mario ran from the bedchamber back to the gate. He crashed into a couple of servant toads, but he paid them no mind. He ran to Luigi's hut to look for some herbal healing. The whispers were beginning to drive him insane, and he needed to find herbs of the old ones to remain himself. After finding Luigi's stash, he consumed several herbs before falling into a deep sleep. When Mario awoke, he was shocked to discover he was in a castle unlike his own, surrounded by Bowser's twisted offspring. As Mario entered the first chamber, Morton confronted him. Within the chamber itself, Morton had prepared to deal with Mario using two fire bars and a red mecha koopa. Morton himself was just out of reach, and Mario needed to find a way to eliminate him. Consuming more shrooms of the old ones, Mario gained the strength he needed to fight back. As he ran away from the fire bars and Morton's magic, he realized how he would kill the dark koopaling. Summoning massive strength, Mario picked up the missiles the red Mecha Koopa was firing at him. Mario thought about how ironic it was that Bowser's own machine would give him the means to defeat his underling. After hurling the missiles at Morton, Mario managed to finish him off. Taking a moment to breathe, Mario thought back to how he got here. He thought, this must be a dream of some sort, but if it's not, then I may be able to gain some intel on Peach's location. Heading into the next room, Mario found himself standing on a Galumba over a ground covered in spikes. In between the spikes, Mario noticed the remains of Koopas and Toads alike. Arms, legs, and innards strewn here and there on the spikes, as if the spikes were a beast hungering for fresh meat. Mario looked up to reveal Larry standing out of reach behind a saw blade. Mario knew that he needed to finish Larry so he could escape. Noticing a red Koopa shell, Mario picked it up, threw it at Larry with all he had. Magic exploding around him, Mario sighed with relief as the shell he threw found its mark, beheading the young Koopaling. Sending a silent prayer up to the old one, Mario went into the next room. On the other side was a lava pit. Iggy stood at the far side, prepared to avenge his brother Larry. Bullet bills and cannons shot at Mario as Iggy began to unleash his magic upon the plumber. Thinking quickly, Mario managed to pick up the cannon shots, jump across the bullet bills, and throw them back at Iggy. Before he knew what had happened, Iggy was no more. He felt for the poor Koopas he was laying waste to. Without the old one on their side, they stood no chance against his approach. 
As Mario opened the final door, flying Goombas and clouds could be seen floating throughout the room. Spikes littered the floor once again and Ludwig was waiting. Mario immediately launched himself at Ludwig to dismantle the Koopa. Despite his clear advantage, Ludwig proved no match and was crushed. Glancing back at the rooms he had come from, Mario wondered why he had been brought here. If this was indeed real, why would Bowser leave him in the hands of his underlings? Surely, he must know they are but a mere sacrifice. It was at this moment Mario realized the true nature of Bowser's plan. Bowser was stalling so he could prepare to summon the Dark One who was promised, the Lord of Dead Dreams. Who is the Lord of Dead Dreams? Maybe a better question is, what is it? Would Mario be able to save Peach in time? Find out next time on Eldritch Mario.